Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Corey and I post new videos every Friday. Today we're going to talk about food waste. If you've seen my last video about doing a trash garbage audit, you may have noticed there was no food scraps in it and I'm going to tell you why. Saving food from the landfill is the best thing you can do for the planet. Did you know that 17% of the world's food produced globally, as in around the world, is wasted? That's something like 931 million tons going to the garbage or the landfill or in some form wasted. Which, by the way, costs about 31 billion, with a B, dollars. That's horrible. I grew up you could not waste food, you could not afford to waste food. Now, as for Canada, apparently 61% of the waste comes from homes and households, which is insane. And apparently, an average Canadian wastes more than an average United States person and an average Britain person. I couldn't believe it. I had to double check the facts, but apparently it's true. Did you know it costs Canada a hundred billion again with the B, dollars annually to dispose of food waste. So that means like the trucks, the gas, you know, the land, uh, the cost of the food, the cost of the farmer to grow it, and so on and so on. It's this food waste in Canada generates 4% of Canada's greenhouse emissions, right? So if Canada wants to reach its Paris Agreement uh, greenhouse gas reduction, like it does want to, it's really going to have to get a handle on the food waste issue and do something about it and do something about it fast. Solutions? Because you know how I like to give solutions, right? Uh, I don't believe in doing videos that's all doom and gloom. We don't need anything more depressing than, you know, we've already seen. Especially if you're aware of the climate situation and everything, it could be like, you know, a lot of eco-anxiety. So, solutions. I believe if you start meal planning and writing down lists of the groceries you need, that will help you. I got myself one of those uh, wall things with the dry erase uh, markers that you can write down what you're going to have and I get my kid to fill it out and stuff. So when you meal plan and you know Monday you're going to have spaghetti, okay, let's say. And Tuesday you're going to have um, some burgers, right? So you know what you have to make for the grocery store. So start writing out lists. That way you go to the grocery store, you buy what you need, you don't have to spend all this time walking around the entire uh, grocery store looking for stuff. You get in, get what you need, get out. And by doing meal planning and making lists, it's actually gonna save you money because it should prevent you from doing impulse buys. How about buying less and proportion size? Now, I admit, I had no clue about proportion size growing up. Um, as you can tell, I'm kind of overweight. And uh, huge plates growing up was normal for us. Um, I didn't know that people don't normally eat, like, huge steaks and two burgers and two sandwiches. And So cutting your proportion size down uh, will help you with food waste. And by buying less produce at the grocery store because you made your meal plan, right? So you know you only need like X amount of burgers or X amount of buns uh, or you only need like five bananas for the week or whatever. So by buying less and proportion size, it can help you stop food waste. How about where and how you buy your food? My local grocery store called Maxi, M-A-X-I, it's very popular in Quebec, Canada, this grocery store, it's everywhere. But they take part in a really cool uh, app for your phone called Flash Food. Now, Flash Food is all over Canada and into parts of the United States. And if you don't have it in your area, what you could do is uh, ask your local grocery store to uh, see if they can get the app. And this is a food waste saving app. I love this thing. Uh, I have saved so much money and so much uh, kilometers of uh, CO2 because the app actually tells you. It's really cool. And what happens is they'll take food that's almost expired but not expired yet, okay? And they'll take all kinds of food like fruits, vegetables, hummus, cheese, 
uh, chips, chocolate bars, uh, they even have plants once, all kinds of meat. Uh, they just have everything on the app. You never know what's going to be there. It changes all the time. And if I eat meat for my family, I actually only buy my meat from there. So it's meat or food that's about to be thrown into the landfill, uh, but it's offered at a discount. So to start, they'll put up, uh, let's say, uh, um, I don't know, let's say uh, chocolate milk. They'll put up chocolate milk and they'll list the regular price, let's say $2 or three dollars whatever uh, when they first put up an item it starts off on the app as 50% off which is amazing right away and the app starts at the same time the store opens so let's say eight o'clock in the morning and that chocolate milk will start off at a dollar fifty or something now if that item is not bought by like halfway through the day like lunchtime 12 one o'clock the price starts to go down so it'll go down to like a dollar and the price will keep decreasing uh, up until the store closes. So my local store closes at, I think it's 10 o'clock at night. So by 9.30 at night, if there's food still on the app, you can get food for like 25 cents. I'm not even joking. I got a pack of six bagels for 25 cents. I got really lucky one day and there was the um, Beyond Meat patties. You know, the, it's like a two pack right and I ended up getting the uh, two pack of Beyond Meat burgers for I think it was two dollars or two dollars and fifty cents and I bought like all of them there was like ten of them there and nobody bought them so this is an amazing an amazing app that um, will save you money like a ton of money and it prevents food waste as part of a solution you need to know about dates best before dates sell by dates and use by dates and I've even seen freshest by dates okay I'm gonna give you a little secret here those four are bullshit yeah I said it and I mean it those dates just mean when it is best to eat that product by okay the product will taste its best its freshest by that date okay that is not a date meaning the item is bad all right so you don't have to throw it out now expiry dates is something different okay let's say you have a uh, peanut butter and it ex it's expired okay now think of it for a minute if you're getting peanut butter it's usually just peanuts that it's oil open it up stir it smell it taste it and see if it's gone bad because chances are it's not bad right you can't tell me that a bag a box of cereal that expired today okay september 1st when i'm doing this video if i open it up september 2nd it's no more good and i'm gonna throw that food out no use your senses look at it smell it taste it chances are it's not bad and i really wish all those dates and wording best by sell by use by expiry freshes by I really wish that wording was standard around the world and that there was a law about how they could use them you want another solution composting this is a very very big one now you need to do something with your scraps so if you have animals, let's say by chance you, uh, you're you on a homestead and you have a little farm and you have chickens or pigs, you could feed all your uh, scraps or most of them to your animals and that would help cut the feed bill a little. And you know, they get some nutrients from all the whatever your scraps are given. But if you don't have animals, then you can compost. Hopefully you can compost if you have it available to you. So I have a kitchen uh, compost that stays under my sink. And I put all my scraps in it once it gets full I could take it out back and I dump it into a compost I have in my backyard now this is home composting so I could take fruits vegetables uh, coffee grounds tea leaves eggshells right your home composter cannot take meat or dairy um, it's a whole different system 
Now, we also have industrial composting. My town offers uh, free pickup uh, in our little brown bin you'll see a picture of. And the compost they could take is everything. They will take all kinds of fruits, vegetables. They will take meat, bones, fish bones, chicken bones, skin, grease, pizza crust. Anything you don't finish off your plate, cooked or raw, they will take it. Because an, an industrial composter that the town does, it gets hotter than my backyard composter can, and it could kill different bacteria. Okay, so there is a difference between home composting and industrial composting. All right, see what you have available to you. I know not everybody can compost, not everybody has a, a town that offers it. Uh, sometimes you get lucky if you can go to a farmer's market. Some farmer's market will take your compost for you, um, your scraps for you, excuse me, to make into compost. Um, but composting is the number one thing you could do to stop food waste from going to the landfill. You're gonna need some knowledge and basic cooking skills. If you can make soup, you're okay. You will prevent so much food waste just by making soup. How many times have people gone out and bought stuff at the grocery store, brought it home and be like, well, I wanted to try it, so I bought it, but now I don't know what to do with it. So you're gonna have to have some basic cooking skills. And you know, try and learn about canning, fermenting, dehydrating, freeze drying if you can, freezing in your freezer. Um, I really wish this stuff was still taught in schools. Let's say you want to go one step further. How about contacting your local government representatives for your town or your city or your province or state or country? I actually emailed um, all my local grocery stores asking for uh, more package free options and ask them to get on the flash food app because some of them are not. Uh, I also actually emailed my um, premier and my prime minister of the country uh, asking them to stop food waste across Canada. Now will anything become of it? I don't know. Maybe they read the email uh, or the people who work for them read the email and just deleted it. I don't know. But um, if everybody does it, then they'll put a demand uh, that, you know, we actually want that for whatever country we live in. So I have a dream. And hey, dreams are free. I want every country, every nation of the world to stop food waste. And I want the governments to make it a law that any facility or business that deals with food has to, at the end of its life, compost it. So that means any grocery store, uh, restaurant, uh, farmer, food distribution center, food processing center, hospitals, schools, uh, citizens' homes, any place that deals with food or sells food, okay, bakeries, whatever, what they need to do is first I would hope they could get on an app like Flash Food we talk about offer the food at a discount before it expires. If it's still not bought or used by the end of its life, it has to be donated to a local food banks. Because I think food banks also need to be held responsible for what they do with their food because I know firsthand that they waste a lot of food only because of the quality of food that they are given is already um, kind of almost expired or sometimes it's expired so they have a lot of waste on their end. Uh, at the end of the life, if it's no more good, can't be bought or used or eaten, it needs to either A, be donated to um, places where they could feed it to animals. Like the Las Vegas casinos actually give their food to the pig farmers in Las Vegas and they eat it so it's not wasted. Or it has to be composted. Now, the funny thing is there are countries in the world already doing this, okay? France, Italy, Spain, Denmark, the Netherlands, they all have certain laws or incentives uh, for the companies and the businesses to uh, donate their food at the end of the day before it is um, thrown in the garbage, okay? 
So Italy and France can't throw their food in the garbage. They have to donate it uh, to like a food bank or to somebody to eat it. Other countries are given, um, the businesses are given incentives to donate their food and not throw it in a landfill. So if other countries can do it, there's no reason why Canada can't do something, right? Now I know some companies don't want to donate their food. They're afraid if they donate it, someone eats it, gets sick, they're going to sue. But a lot of places in the world, Canada included, in most of the provinces, not all, they have something called the Good Samaritan Act, okay? This allows businesses, and myself included, individuals, to donate food to food banks, to give to people to eat, and if they get sick from it, they can't come back and sue, okay? The only time they could sue is if I donated something I knew for a fact was bad or rancid or had a possibility of E. coli or salmonella in it and that goes to the same with the businesses, okay? So if they donated meat that they knew was really bad on purpose and still donated it and people got sick, yeah, they could sue. But in general, a lot of places have that Good Samaritan Act that uh, they can't get sued for it. If you made it to the end, good for you and thanks for sticking around. If you want to subscribe, go ahead. I won't even tell you to hit the notification bell because personally, when I use it for the people I follow, it doesn't work. So I will see you next Friday. Have a good one.